Okay, question seven here. We're told a project is modelled by the activity network in figure five, which is here. The activity is represented uh, by the arcs. The number in the brackets on each arc gives the time in days to complete each activity. Each activity requires one worker. The project is to be completed in the shortest time possible. Notice it says the sum of the duration of all the activities is 172 days. For part A, complete diagram one in the answer book to show the early event and late event times. So, we go to this in our, in our uh, answer booklet. The early event times are along the top and we do a forward pass and the late event times are the bottom numbers and we do a backwards pass. When we're going forwards, we're looking for the biggest number we can get to on top. So how do we get here in the largest possible number of days? So, how do we get to here? Well, the only option is to go via 5. We can't go via B because the arrows are going the wrong way, so 5 has to be that number here. Okay, this one's already completed. Let's just check why it's 7. Well, we could go 3, but we could go via C, 7 and up, so that's why we pick the biggest out of 3 and 7, which is 7. How do you get here? Well, in 7, clearly. Okay, we've done the first set. How do we get to here? Well, it could be the 5 add the 9, okay, or it could be the 7 add the 8. And 7 add 8 is equal to 15, and 5 and 9 is 14, so we're going to go for the 15. What about here? Well, that says 18. It's 15 and nothing is 18, or 7 add 11 is 18, which is bigger than 7 add 5, which is 12. So that's why that's 18, 18. This one's done for us. How could we get here? Well, either 15 add 12, which is 27, or 18 add 9, which is 27, or we need to consider this one first though. So how do we get here? 11 add uh, 15 is equal to 26. So this here could be 26 add 0 is 26. 15 add 12 is 27 or 18 add 9 is 27. So we're going to go for 27. How do we get here? 27 add 9 which is 36 or 26 add 8 which is equal to uh, 34. Um, so we're going to go for the 36 here. How do we get here in 42? Let's just check we can do that. Well, it's the 28 add the 14 is 42 because that's bigger than 27 add 11 and 36. So we've done the forward ones. They're all done. Let's go backward now. So from 53, how do we get back here? 53 take away 11 is 42. To get here, we could either do 53 take away 10, which is 43, or 42 take away nothing. Okay, now we're looking for the smallest one, so we're going to choose the 42. Right, how do we get, let's say, um, here? How could we get here? Well, it's either 42 take away 8, which would be equal to 34, or if we go via here, well, let, actually, let's do this one first. It's 42 take away 11, which is equal to 31, or it's 42 take away 9, which is equal to 33. The smaller is 31, so we're going to go for 31. 31 take away nothing is 31. 42 take away 8 is equal to 34. The smallest is 31, so we're going to go for that one. Okay, how could we get here in the shortest possible time? Well, then it's either 18 take away 0, or it's, which is 18, 31 take away 12, now 31 take away 12 would be 19, or 31 take away 11, which would be 20. The smallest is 18, so we're going to write 18. What about here? It's either 28 take away 19, which is 9, or it's 18 take away 5, which is 13. So we're going to go for 9. Now this one here, it was, it was 18 take away 11, which is smaller than 9, um, so it's clearly 7. How do you get here? 18 take away 9 is 9, and 7 take away nothing um, in this case would be equal to 7, so that one should be 7 uh, there. Okay, so we've done the forwards and backwards pass there to get the early and late event times. We've done part A for 4 marks. Then it says calculate the total float for activity M. You must make the numbers you use in your calculation clear. So for part B, we're just going to write this down and show our, our working here. So for part B, the float of M. 
Well, let's look at activity M. Let's highlight activity M here. Um, let's find it. Where is M? Here. Okay, so it's going to be this one here. It's the late event time here. 42, takeaway 8, takeaway 26. So it's going to be 42, takeaway 8, takeaway 26. Um, so 42, takeaway 8, takeaway 26 is equal to 8. 8 days is our float there. Now let's just think why that's the case. Looking back at M, M can start at 26. And or it could go up to starting at 31. So it could start at 26. It's 8 long, which brings us to a possible of 34. But it can end all the way up to 42. So 42 uh, take away uh, 34 is equal to the 8 float we're looking for. So we've done this one now. For each of the situations below, explain the effect the delay would have on the project. A two-day delay, a two -day delay on activity P. So let's look at activity P here. Now this one has a float of, um, let's work that out actually, the float of P is equal to 42 take away 11 take away 27. So 42 take away 11 take away 27, which is equal to 42 take away 11 take away 27, which is equal to four days. Okay, so we can say therefore a two-day delay, a two-day delay on on P will not affect the project overall project because we've got a four float for activity P. However. For activity Q, let's look at the float of Q. Now, the float of Q, well, the float of Q, let's identify Q first. Where is Q here? Here. Well, it's 42 take away 14 take away 28, which is nothing. So 42 take away 14 take away 28. So 42 take away 14 take away 28 is nothing. So 42 take away 14 take away 28. It's got a zero float. So therefore, it's critical. So therefore, a two-day de delay for Q will delay the whole project by two days. The whole project by two days. Okay, so that's what critical means. Any delay on the critical activity delays the whole project. A two-day delay on something with a float of four will not delay the whole project because you've got that slack without delaying the project. Okay, so it then says part D. Calculate a lower bound for the number of workers needed to complete the project in the shortest possible time. This is a formula you've just got to learn. So the lower bound, the lower bound, okay, it's equal to the uh, sum of all the activities, so the length of all activities divided by the length of the critical, of the critical path, critical path. So they tell us the top number in the question, they say it's 172, so that's the number we always look for, 172, divided by the critical path which we found was 53, so if we do 172 divided by 53, that's equal to 3.2. So 3.2, therefore lower bound is four workers because you can't have 3.2 workers, so you round it up. So the lower bound is four workers. So we've done uh, this one here. <coughs> Part E, it asks us, Diagram 2 in the book, it asks us to fill this in for the Gascade chart. It's filled in C, F, L, Q and S. So what it's filled in for us, let's highlight what it's filled in. It's filled in C, so this one. Uh, F, L, Q, S. So C, F, L, Q and S. It's filled in all that. And it's done A and B, so it's done A and B for us. So what we need to do is fill in all the other ones. So let's do it in order. Let's go for D next. The way I read this, can start at 5 is 9 long. So D, I start it at 5, which is here. 
It's nine long, so that goes up to 14. So I get a little box and I go from nine all the way up to 14. Okay, but it could go up to 18. So I extend my box a little bit along to 18, like that. I shade this bit in and I call that D, like that. And we've done this one. Let's go for E. It starts at seven. So it starts at seven, which is here. It's um, eight long, so it can go up to 15, which is here, but it could go all the way up to 18, which would bring it to here. So again, I'd shade that in here, and I'd call that E, and I'd tick off I've done that one as well. Let's go for, uh, we've done F, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, so let's go for G. can start at seven, so let's start off at seven. Could go five long, so could go up to 12, but could go up to a possible of 18. So you draw it all the way out there to 18 like that. Again, you colour in this slack here or this float and you highlight that as G and you say you've done G. After G is H, so let's do this one. It can start at seven, it's 19 long, so it could go all the way up to 26. So uh, it starts at seven, could go all the way up to 26, which is here. <clears throat> but could go up to 28. So we draw a little slack on there for 28 like that. And we highlight that as H. So I've done that one. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. We want to go for I. Starts at 15 is 11 long, so we go up to 26. So starts at 15. 11 long, so we can go up to 26, but could go up to 31. So you draw that up to 31 like that. Okay, and that's I. Then we want J. Starts at 15, is 12 long, so it goes up to 27. So starts at 15 again. Could go up to 27, which is here. But can go up to a possible of 31 again, which is here. So this would be J. And we'll have done that one as well. Now, did we do E? We did E, uh, and that was a... That wasn't critical, that one. So A, B, Z, J, K. So starts at 18, goes up to 9, so to 27. So start at 18. So 18 starts here. It's 9 long, so it goes up to 27. Yeah. But could go up to, um, where are we at here? so we do up to 31 there and again we highlight that and that would be K after K is L we've done L L has been done so A B C D E F G H I J K L M we want to do M next so M starts at 26 is 8 long so goes up to 34 so starts at 26 which is here goes up to 34 but could go up to 42 so you draw it out to 42 there Let's do N as well. Starts at 27. It's 9 long, so it goes up to 36, which is here. But could go up to 42, which is here as well. So I'm going to do both of those together like that. That's that slack. That's that slack there. And that was M, and that was N. So I've done these two. Um, so we want to do... Uh, P next, so starts at 27, is 11 long, so it goes up to uh, 38. So start at 27, which is here, goes up to a possible 38, but could go up to 42, and 42, which is um, here. So again, we cover that one off, and that is P. And the last one, we've done P, so we want P, Q, R, and S. We want R and S. S is done, so we just want R. Starts at 36, so starts at... 36 this one is 10 long so it could go up to 46 which is here but could in theory go all the way up to 53 so you draw up to 53 here okay and that therefore is our last one which is R and that there is for our cascade chart okay now it says 
For part F, use your cascade chart to determine the second lower bound for the number of workers in need. You must make specific reference to times. This is where you look at your cascade chart, look where it's super busy, and draw a line down to see how many workers you need at most. Here, around here is where it's really busy. So I'm going to draw, let's say, a line down about here on the 21st day. And let's think about what's happening there on the 21st day. I need one worker for L. No matter where I shift H, I'm going to need a worker for that. I can't shift it out. I'm going to need a worker for I. I can't shift that out here. For J, I'm going to need a worker for J. I can't shift that out. And for K, well, actually, I could shift K out here. So what I need to do is I need to move this over a little bit to the 20, maybe the 23rd day. So I want to move this to the 23rd day so that I can't shift K out of action there. And I can't. So now I need one for K, two, three, four, five workers. So it's a minimum of five workers. So for part E, I'm going to say at day 23, I'm going to say um, this activity here was L, L, H, I, J, and K. So I'm going to say L, H, I, J, and K are all happening happening, therefore five workers needed. Okay, and that's a new lower bound. And lastly, it says state which of these is better, give a reason for your answer. Now, the lower bound in part D is the theoretical lower bound. Given the numbers and not looking at what ordering uh, activities happening, what could the lowest bound be? Whereas F is actually a reality of the problem, that is the lower bound. So we're going to say that the answer in um, F is better. So we're going to say um, that was F there. So for G, we're going to say answer in F better as E is theoretical lower bound, whereas F is actual lower bound, and that would be our final answer.